Today in our 2015 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, we're going to be taking a look at installing the SMI Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System, part number SM99251. Now here's what it looks like once it's installed. This is going to be the proportional braking system. It's got an inertia switch that's going to help it activate. The proportional part is going to be as you step on the brakes in your coach, the brakes in your, in your towed vehicle are going to come on with the same intensity that they come on in your coach. You can adjust the aggressiveness by our inertia switch by moving it up or down to how you would like it to operate. Your system's going to stay in place in the car at all times. The only thing really going to be visible is going to be your, your G-Force box. Your air sealer is going to be tucked up under the dash and your operating unit will be tucked away securely as well. Now our system does have a coach notification light that's going to light up every time that your brakes are being applied in your towed vehicle and you can see that from your rear view mirror or your rear view camera from your coach. It's going to be a one-time setup. Once you have everything adjusted after the first run, simply turn on the switch and you're ready to go. Now here's where your kit's going to consist of. We're going to have our operating unit. It's going to stay in the vehicle. Our G-Force controller. This is how we're going to adjust the sensitivity of our unit. Our LED light that will light up whenever your system is in operation. Our breakaway switch. If it was ever to come unattached from your vehicle, this is what's going to stop your car. Our miscellaneous hardware. This is going to be your lanyard to go between your coach and your breakaway switch. And our air cylinder that's going to operate the pedal on our vehicle as our system is operating. This is what's going to apply your brakes. Now our first step is going to be to locate a, a, an area we want to mount our operating unit in. And I've chosen to put it underneath the seat. On this vehicle we're going to have plenty of room. And I've checked underneath. There's nothing under the carpet as far as wiring. So we can go there with a couple screws. And I've checked on the bottom side to make sure that that's not going to interfere with anything either. So we're going to mount it right there. I'm going to put some self-tapping screws into the floor to hold down our unit. We just need to secure it down so it can't bounce around in there. Now we'll be ready to run our hose and wire it to the front of the vehicle. We're going to need to get access underneath our sill panel here so we can reach up in the front and we're just going to give it a, a tug out. Or you can use a panel tool like I'm going to use or you can use a flat blade screwdriver. Pop this clip out. Take our panel, we'll slide it forward and remove it. Now we're going to need to route our wires and our vacuum line that's going to tie into the vacuum on our engine up to the front. So we're going to run underneath this where the sill plate's removed under the wiring harness. Now I've taken a little bit of electrical tape and put it about every 12 to 18 inches apart just to hold them together in a nice bundle so we can route that up to the front as well. Now we're, the last thing we're going to do to, to, to run back in here is going to be this quarter inch air line that's going to run our air cylinder. I'm going to route that the same direction. We'll take it and we'll press it into this position here push it in until you feel it click, give it a tug, that way you know it's locked. I'm going to route that to the front as well. Now I went ahead and cut a little notch in our sill plate cover here where it's going to go over top of all the lines that we've run through. I'll have to pop this back up off of there so we can get it in place. Now this is going to go underneath this edge here of the sill. We'll reinstall our push pin. And the last thing we're going to mount for our controllers is going to be our G-Force controller. It's going to mount like this. Now you keep in mind this has to mount long ways with the vehicle with the knob part always facing inside and the flat part to the outside of the vehicle. It needs to be on the driver's side 
or if you were to put it in the passenger side, it would have to still mount like it was on the driver's side with the flat part to the left side of the vehicle. So we're going to place it there and we're going to install it with the supplied screws. These are a nice short screw which is going to go into the plastic. We've already checked while we had this part that there's nothing behind there so we can go ahead and apply our screws. You want to keep this as level as possible as well. We're going to get all of our wires up tucked up here for now so we can go out to the front of the vehicle and we're going to install our breakaway switch. I went ahead and got a, universal, a short universal mounting bracket available on our website, part number 18140. And I bent over the back half of our bracket and drilled a hole. And we're going to attach that to the framework of our base plate. And we'll slide that as close to the center as possible. We're going to go ahead and mount this electrical connection on there as well. We're going to mount our bracket, we're going to take the supplied hose clamp. We're going to slip it through. Then we're going to tighten it up. And then we can snip off our excess and we'll fold it back on itself so it isn't sharp. Now that we have our breakaway switch mounted nice and tight, it's able, we'll be able to work easily. You want to try and keep it close to center as possible so it doesn't get pulled out when you're turning left or right pulling behind your coach. We ran our wires up behind the grill. It's going to be the orange with the black tracer and the blue wire. We brought them out up top here. Right now I just have them tied around this so they don't fall back down. Now we're going to need to bring our wiring from the inside of the vehicle to the outside. Now we're going to need to gain access through the firewall and on this vehicle being it's an automatic there's a grommet where your clutch slave cylinder would normally come through so we're going to use this grommet right here to run our wiring in and out of the cab. If your vehicle is equipped with a, with a standard shift you're probably going to have to drill a hole and put a grommet in the firewall. And once we have our wiring in there we can just silicone the holes back up. Now we went ahead and ran our vacuum hose from our operating unit and we also ran the yellow, the white and the green wire from our G-Force unit and the blue wire from our operating unit. All those went outside through that grommet in the firewall. Now this is our LED coach notification light. And you can see it doesn't have a real long cord on it so they do give you about a three and a half foot extension of red and black wire. So we're going to go ahead and strip back a little bit of this extension wire. <laughs> we'll twist those up. We're going to install our supplied blue butt connectors. And we can just match those up with the two wires coming out of our light. Now they do have these nice little adapters on here that's going to help make the diameter a little larger so you can crimp your wire. So we'll slide that into position. Hold it in there tight. And once you've got them secure, we're going to go ahead and just tape up this whole connection so it can't get separated. Now we'll just go down the wire every six or eight inches and put a little piece of tape. Keep our two wires together. Now we're going to need to locate an area to, find to mount our coach notification light. The back of the mirror is usually a pretty good spot and we can just tuck it along the top of the windshield and down the side of the A-pillar. We're going to put it something like that, making sure not to block any of these sensors that are in the mirror. So we'll clean it off with some little bit of rubbing alcohol. Clean off the area in the back of our light. We're going to take our supplied hook and loop, peel back the backing, we'll install it to the back of the light. And we'll mount it to the back of our mirror. Now this is a very bright light so it will be visible from the coach, rear view mirror or backup camera without any problem. Now we can just take our wire and we'll tuck it back behind the trim panel. Just pulling out a little bit and letting it push up in there. You should be careful you don't break the window while you're doing this.
And I went ahead and removed this cover, it just snaps off. And I pulled their wire down through the bottom here. And we're going to drop it out the bottom side of the dash so we can make our connections. Get our wire in there. Take our cover. Slip it back into position. And we'll just snap it back in. Now we have the light, the wires from our indicator light, the red and black that we lengthened. We're going to tie the black wire with the black wire from our G-Force unit and the black wire from our control unit all together. So we're going to need to shorten those up. You want to leave it long enough out of your G-Force controller that we can hide the wires. So we'll go ahead and we'll cut these all off. And strip them back. And we're going to take two of them and we'll twist them together. Install our butt connector. Give that a tug. Make sure it's nice and tight. Then to the other side, we're going to place the other black wire. It came from our operating unit. And we'll put a little bit of electrical tape around those to help protect our connections. And next we're going to tie the two red wires, one from the operating unit and the one from the G-Force controller together. We'll tie those two red wires together. Now the red wire that came from the indicator light, on some vehicles you tie it into the brake light switch, the hot side of the brake light switch. In this case, our vehicle will end up with a dead switch, meaning it doesn't have any power after 30 seconds of operation when, the, when it's in tow mode. So we're just gonna tie that into the wire out in the front. So we're gonna lengthen this red wire and run it outside as well. We're gonna go ahead and cut these two wires. And we're going to save a piece of that red so we can lengthen the one from our light. We'll strip these two back. We're going to crimp them together with our butt connector. And we can go ahead and tape up that joint. And we're going to need to get these wires up and behind our panel. We'll zip tie them together. Now we'll take a piece of that scrap wire we cut off, the red wire. We're going to install a butt connector on the end of there. And we'll tape it up. We need to get this red wire outside as well. Now that we have our wiring through that hole that we pointed out a little earlier, I went ahead and put some loom that we'll supply with our kit, covering the wiring up out of the firewall and up over here <clears throat> where we have our four pole wiring that was previously installed in our vehicle. Now they left a nice large loop and I'm going to go ahead and cut that down. So I'm going to cut a section out of here. To this we're going to attach the green, the yellow, and the white's going to go to ground. So we're going to go ahead and separate these out. You just take your knife and set it in between there and gently pull. That'll let you separate them out without tearing up the outside of the covering. So I'm going to go ahead and strip back our brown wire on both sides. Now it's not a bad idea to pick up a couple extra butt connectors if you should have to lengthen any wires. And on most applications you're going to run into where the wires aren't long enough or you have to route them somewhere in a different, run it, route it differently and take up a little extra of the wire so you're going to have to add a piece. We'll reconnect our brown wire. Now we can strip back our yellow wire on both sides. Put our yellow wire in. Once we finish all our connections, we're going to go ahead and put some electrical tape around there to ensure that we keep all of the corrosion out.
And once we're happy they're all nice and tight, we can tape them up. We can tuck our excess back in behind this cover here. So we're going to take our ground wire. I've taken the extra piece of wire, white wire that comes with our kit for ground. We're going to strip these two back. We're going to twist them both together. And we're going to install a ring loop connector on the end. We're going to take this factory nut off where the ground is, 10 millimeter. We'll install that on there. We'll reinstall our nut and tighten it back up. That's going to ground, be one of our grounds for our system. The other one, we're going to run this extra piece of wire down and ground it to the plug where it connects into our coach. Now I went ahead and ran that extra ground from up top down here and grounded it to the same location that the wiring is grounded. And that's going to be our second ground. So after we have our ground connected, we're going to come back up here and we're going to have three wires left. It'll be the red wire that we extended from our light, the blue wire from our control unit, and the blue wire from the breakaway switch. So we're going to attach the red wire and the blue wire coming from the inside of the vehicle together. We're going to strip those back. And we'll strip back the other side from the breakaway switch. Take our wire from the breakaway switch. We'll take our red wire from the light and the blue wire from our operating unit. We'll attach those two to the other side of our breakaway switch. Crimp it together, give it a tug. And the last connection we're gonna make, is gonna be our orange and black, orange with black tracer from our breakaway switch. That's gonna tie into our brown wire then the brown wire is going to go on and go over to our battery that's going to get our power. So we're going to cut our brown wire and we'll strip back all of our wires. I had to get a longer piece of wire to run over to our battery because our battery is on the other side of the vehicle. And we got some large yellow butt connectors to attach these wires. Crimp those together, making sure they're nice and tight. And we'll take our brown wire from the operating unit, crimp it up. Once we have them nice and secure, we can tape them up, then we'll route our wire over to the battery. I went ahead and covered our wiring with loom, and we ran our new power wire underneath this radiator shield. Out across, and we put some more loom, ran it down behind our air box, in behind here, and we're going to come up to the positive side of our battery terminal. Now we're going to take our fuse holder, we're going to cut it off center, and we're going to install a ring loop connector on one end, and we'll crimp that on. Then to this side, we're going to go ahead and strip it back as well. We're going to cut our wiring, our brown wire back. And we can tape up our connection and we'll be ready to attach it to our battery. Now we can slide our piece of loom back over top. And we can tape it on. Then we can take a 10 millimeter socket. We're going to loosen up this one here. Snug this back down. And you want to be careful when you're tightening it up that you don't come into contact with anything that's going to be a ground with your wrench. We can zip tie that there and it'll hold our fuse holder up out of the way. Trim off our excess. Now we're going to need to tee in with our line coming out of our operating unit into the brake booster vacuum part. 
So we're going to go ahead and cut this line that comes out of our booster with a tubing cutter available on our website, part number AL10530. And we're going to have to cut that covering on the outside with a, pair, with a knife. It's like a nylon cover on the outside. I'm just going to push it back. And we're going to need to figure out how much line we're going to need here. I'm going to route this behind these factory hoses. We're going to come up in this area here and we can trim back this hose. Now that we have our hose cut to where we're going to need it, that hose is going to go onto this side of our T. Then our T is going to go in between the engine and the booster. And we're also going to install this check valve. Now our check valve is going to go in line with the black side pointing towards the engine. So we'll slide in this end to our hose. We're going to cut a short, about an inch and a half long piece. We'll install that on one side of our T. The black side going towards the engine. We'll slide that on to the hose that we cut. We're just going to work it down until it's nice and flat. We'll let our original covering come back over as far as it needs to. To the other side, slide this back. We'll install our teeth to the other side. Then we can install the part from our operating unit onto the back part of our T. Now our last thing to install is going to be our air cylinder mounted to the pedal. So we can take off the nuts. We're going to take our cylinder, we're going to slide it over the pedal. Install the plate. I'm just going to loosely install this and get an idea where we're going to need to cut our carpeting for our anchor point. Now we're going to want to slide this up as far as possible without making it interfere with anything under our dash. I'm going to keep it about one to two inches above the ball of your foot where it normally rides on our pedal. And you're looking for the angle of making sure this is a straight shot. You want to make sure that when you're going through your travel, your cable is still going to be in a straight line. If it's not in a straight line, it's going to wear out your air cylinder prematurely and causing it not to work. So once we have it figured out where we're going to mount it, we're going to go ahead and cut out a square in our carpeting so we can get to the firewall. Now it does come with a self-tapping screw, but in this case we can actually get to the back side, so we're going to put a bolt with a large fender washer on the outside to make sure it's going to stay nice and secure for years to come. You want to get your cable set to the close to where we need to have it before we mount it. You want to have about a quarter to a half inch of play and since our cylinder is a large slotted area we're going to mount it in the center of the bracket and that way we can adjust our adjust it back and forth as we need to without having to remove this set screw and change our cable so i've gone ahead and already tightened up this set screw in the area we want in the location we want it in you want to make sure you loop it through once and then come back through a second time that's going to ensure that's going to stay tight now we're going to go ahead and mark out our hole. Now we've already checked on the other side and we're not going to come into any contact with anything, so we're going to go ahead and drill our hole. Now we're going to use a fender washer, a quarter inch bolt, and a nylon lock nut to secure our anchor point. So we'll place our bolt through the firewall. Now on the outside we're going to put our fender washer and our nylon lock nut. And we've gone ahead and tightened up our bolt through the firewall. Now we want to make sure when we press down our pedal that our cable is going to be in the center of the anchor point. We want to have about a quarter to a half inch of play in here, which is what we've got. So now we'll go ahead and just tighten up four nuts on our bracket. Using a 3 8 wrench, we're going to do it in a crisscross pattern. So make sure we get it tightened up evenly. 
Now you want to snug these down, but you don't want to. You can break them very, you know, fairly easily. So you want to be careful, just to make sure they're tight. But don't, definitely don't use any kind of impacts on them. Do it by hand. And you're going to see that the brackets actually the brackets going to start to bow around the pedal, and that's what we're looking for. That way it'll stay secure. The last thing we're going to have to do is attach our airline. And we're going to want to leave a little bit of slack in here so it can move back and forth freely and not bind up. So we'll go ahead and take our cutter, trim up our line. We're going to press it in firmly. You'll feel it kind of click. Pull back on it to let you know that it's locked. Now we'll be ready to test our system. Our last thing to do is going to be install our 20 amp supplied fuse into the fuse holder. Just snap it down in there. And we'll install the weather tight cap. It's going to help seal it up. Now when you're ready to use it, you're simply going to flip the switch to the on position. And with everything plugged in, you're going to have somebody go into your coach and step on the brake. You're going to listen for the pump to run, pulling, this, pulling the pedal down. And you'll rotate this up until the pump just stops. Go about a quarter of an inch more, and you'll snug down this nut. That's going to set your sensitivity. Now you can change it if it's too sensitive or not sensitive enough. You can adjust it up or down as need be. Now once it's on, we can test it without hooking it to the coach right now by pulling out the <clears throat> breakaway switch and that will actuate our system. When your system is active, you'll see the lights come on from the coach notification light. Allowing you to know that your system is working. And that's going to do it for our look at and install of the, of the SMI Stay and Play Duo Supplemental Braking System, part number SM99251, on our 2015 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.